Today, in another episode of David Does Dumb Sarcasm, which a lot of you seem to miss and then get weirdly triggered by for some reason, we're gonna have a look at a laptop that I bought new from Best Buy for less than a hundred dollars. And then we're gonna do the only thing I know how to do with it. We're gonna try and game on it. And the seller took the time to use tamper evident tape, which, I mean, isn't all tape closing a box technically tamper evident? But <laughs> anyway, let's open it up. Wow, never mind, that tampering is evident. Hey, it's a Lenovo again. Hashtag definitely not sponsored. That, that bit wasn't sarcasm, by the way. <laughs> Now obviously, for less than $100, we're getting a Chromebook, which I don't know if that really counts as a real laptop, but I guess that's something for the Garys to find out in the comment section down below. Now this little Lenovo Chromebook is interesting because it's got a CPU in it that's not by Intel or AMD. And then we've got four gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of eMMC memory, and we've got some integrated graphics in that non-Intel slash AMD CPU. And also we get a frankly massive 11.6 inch HD display. Oh, look at how cute this little 45 watt power brick is. And that's one of the massive advantages of a Chromebook because everything's so low powered, you can make everything teeny weeny and super portable. And then we have the Mickey Mouse ear power plug. Again, it's so little. Ugh. How the hell did this only cost a hundred dollars? This is such a cute little laptop. Wow, that feels rugged as hell. Oh, it's such a cute, well-made feeling little device for something that costs less than the tax on a lot of new graphics cards. IO is Apple limited, but at least this doesn't cost $8,000. Generally, there's a nice mixture of textures. Even the little Chrome logo is rubberized and feels pretty cool, which is very impressive because for $100, even if this was made out of used bits of tissue paper, I wouldn't really mind. Very much does not pass the one hand open test. You know, it, it kind of looks like a tiny MacBook. The keystrokes bottom out quite hard, but that is a very reasonable feeling keyboard actually. Damn, especially again for a hundred dollar device. We do have a very glossy reflective screen. Brightness may be an issue and like visibility in, in well-lit rooms, but we'll, we'll see that a bit later. We even get this very useful fold back hinge thing that turns it into like a tablet with a keyboard glued to the back. You know, even the texture of the trackpad isn't that bad. We've got top firing speakers. And then of course we have the standard Lenovo hentai begone webcam blocker thing. And then on the back, we don't have any ventilation, but you know, it's cause it's a Chromebook. It puts out less warmth than the sole of an Nvidia exec, which I think is a good point to bring up the specs. This little Lenovo Chromebook is based around a MediaTek MT8183, which is an ARM based SOC, which in MediaTek's own words, is an entry Chromebook platform. That is real promising for the gaming performance of this thing. Now, for those of you that like to see laptop nudes, you're gonna be a bit disappointed because I just couldn't get it open. I undid all the screws and then started tugging and squeezing and pushing. While trying to pry the bottom off, it felt like there were hidden screws I couldn't access without breaking something, and I didn't want to hurt the poor little device. And even if I did get it open, it wouldn't have made any difference because everything inside is soldered down. This really is like a little MacBook. <coughs> Right there, we can see a very reasonable use case for this little Chromebook, a little kiddo book. Now, considering that this is a Chromebook, meaning it's essentially a cell phone in a different form factor, it means we're gonna have to go about gaming on it a little differently. So let's do it in phases, starting off with just going onto the Play Store and seeing what 
basically phone games we can run on it. Mobile gaming. The first one to show up is Subway Surfers. I cannot believe that's still a thing. I actually remember watching other kids play this on their cell phones while I was at school. This has been around for a very long time. When I first loaded into Subway Surfers, it took me a while of shouting at the settings screen to figure out that I had to use the touch screen to play the game. Oh, okay. There we go. I am very dumb. And after trying to make excuses for my terrible gameplay. Okay, the touch screen's a bit hit or miss, I'm not gonna lie. So is the hit detection, apparently. Ah! I decided I really like Subway Surfers. Okay, that sucks. Let's not play any more of that. Next, I tried out Roblox, which doesn't count as a mobile game, I don't think, but it runs natively on the device, so I do what I want. Wow, here's a very poorly rated Spider-Man simulator. I feel like I have to try that one. Now, I may never have been in New York before, but I can tell that this is a very realistic depiction of New York. I have to buy the gauntlet. That seems like pay to win. Wow, that person just paid to win with their mom's credit card. Very nice. Unfortunately, when things get busy, the Chromebook starts chugging. It's not quite stab bamboo in your eyes to make it stop bad, but unless you're playing emptier game modes, it doesn't run very well. Well, from the performance metrics, we can see that we're clearly CPU bound and not GPU bound. If I play it like this, it actually works better than using a mouse or keyboard. <laughs> Now a game like Asphalt 9 um, doesn't run particularly well. Like it's quite stuttery. It's definitely usable, but it's not what I'd call a great gaming experience at all. And just to put the performance of this little SOC into perspective, I ran the only compatible 3 d Mark benchmark, Slingshot, and got this result, which is about 20% as fast as a high-end smartphone, which immediately made me want to try some emulation on it. Initially getting RetroArch to launch was really easy, but everything beyond that was quite a struggle. For example, the only way I could get the Xbox controller working with the Chromebook was by actually plugging it in. That isn't RetroArch's fault, but I just wanted to complain about it. But anyway, after some mild shouting, I eventually got a PS1 game running. Okay, after many hours of struggling, I finally got RetroArch running, and Crash Bandicoot is running very nicely. Now, considering how in the middle of the display the game is, it does feel a bit like we're gaming on a Casio digital watch, but there are settings to fix that, which I'll change uh, while I switch over to a more demanding PS1 game. Oh yeah, look at that Gran Turismo 2 action. I mean, it's running the crap out of these PS1 games. Which brings us to the final hurdle all Chromebooks must face. GeForce Now. Hmm. So it's been loading for about 10 minutes now. Feel like that's a reasonable point to back out. Damn, this little Chromebook can actually run GeForce Now in a way that doesn't make it feel like the device I'm gaming on is mid-heavy drug binge. It is actually reasonably responsive and it doesn't look like complete garbage. We don't have heavy artifacting going on. What makes it even more impressive is that it's just over the Wi-Fi. We haven't even plugged it into Ethernet yet. Normally, with this kind of device, streaming GeForce Now over the Wi-Fi looks like it's streaming at 140p, but this is way better. Does it get better if we plug it into the internet? I don't know. If anything, using the dongle Ethernet makes it worse, but it's basically the same. Really surprisingly usable. Let's try another game. Now, of course, we need to try Fortnite, which in my previous experience is one of the better running GeForce Now games. It's a little stuttery, but it's not too bad. And in terms of like input lag and stuff, it, it feels pretty good. The display is very small though. So ah, uh, yeah, Fortnite, it, it's not a great gaming experience. You know, like it's gonna be harder to see players at a distance and stuff. And the unfortunate thing about GeForce Now and it being a game streaming service is that its performance very much depends on where you live, which means it doesn't really apply to everybody, which, which is a shame. But putting that aside, I am so impressed with how well this little media tech entry level SOC is running this game streaming because I've seen Celeron based Chromebooks really struggle with it. And with that, what did we learn in today's video? 
Well, for half the price Apple charges for 8 gigs of RAM, you can get like a mini MacBook that can kind of game, which is pretty cool. Uh, and that brings me to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, consider watching another one. A suggestion will pop up in a second. And until the next video, bye bye.